welcome to a not really Halloween themey show here for the last uh, time before Halloween, but that's okay. There's more than enough Halloween festivities and stuff to go around. We got some spooky books and whatnot for you this week as well. Um, but more importantly, welcome to episode number 364 of All New Comics Should Smell Good. That's right, we carefully added up all the previous volumes and scientifically broke down the, the factors that went into it and the divisions and the strangeness and whatever and put the Marvel method on it and came up with number 364. So that is the specific scientific number of how many that we've done here. Point one. I'm sorry, 364.1. You can't, you know, you get the half issues. Sometimes you gotta, you know, add the remainder, you add a little, lose a little, whatever. Um, but anyway, uh, enough of my mathematician scientific nonsense. Why don't we start with Mr. I have a freaking badass altered beast hat over there. Oh, let's, just, oh, yeah. let's, just, let's just take a look mm. at Marvel at that altered beast hat for a minute. I know, I came back from California a changed man. Much more stylish. It's true. As you can see. It's true. Um, talking about stylish books here, how about, I feel like one of the unsung titles of DC Rebirth is... Hope Larson and Raphael mm. Albuquerque's Batgirl. Possibly the most energetic superhero book going on right now, at least from DC, as far as I know. I don't really look at the Marvel books anymore, between you and me. Um, but Hope Larson's bringing her, like, really, like, youthful, fun energy from her own graphic novels, and then fusing with Raphael Albuquerque is just absolutely masterful draftsmanship. Like, he's... He's rather sparse with his line work, but it really, uh, teaming up with Dave McKaig on colors, he, like, manages to really counterbalance it by throwing in these really weird, like, pop art backgrounds, and really, like, everything just pops. It really, really pops. Um, this sees Batgirl traveling through Asia, confronting the students of the mysterious teacher, who she finally has a showdown with this issue. Cool. Uh, I'm going to stick with DC for my next pick. This is a massive book for Wonder Woman. It's the number one, and it's the 75th issue of the Amazon icon, who, of course, is now a United Nations ambassador for the world. Um, but this is an awesome collection for Wonder Woman fans of every age and of every era. Lots of great artists, lots of great um, writers and storytellers. There's lots of short stories. There's lots of art. There's an exclusive interview with Wonder Woman by Lois Lane. It's oh, a lot cool. of fun. And uh, there's two covers. This is one cover, and there's another cover by the great Jim Lee. Um, so awesome Wonder Woman action here. 75, uh, 75th anniversary issue. Plus, we've also got Wonder Woman number 9, which picks up The Lies by Greg Rucka and Liam Sharp. Indeed. Uh... Scary stories for kids, because, you know, kids need spooky stories, too. It's not just adults. Um, from Albatross, uh, Eric Powell's um, uh, imprint, uh, publishing house, comes a new story. Two new, actually, three new stories in here. Two by Eric Powell, one with art by Steve Mannion, who is doing the Fearless Dawn books, uh, which came out, you know, over the last couple of years, which is really cool. Um, but this has been, it's been really fun to see Eric Powell do some stuff that's not the goon. I love the goon, um, but he's got a wide range of other things that he does. Um, and this one, we got Heck Razor, which is always humorous. Um, and, I mean, you know, you're opening up and you look at punks and freaking, you know, uh, Frankenstein masks and Dracula masks. And it looks like, you know, fun, mad kind of 50s art. Um, but really great number one here. If you've been uh, interested in Hillbilly or reading Hillbilly, I re recommend it. All right. And my next book here is something... Scary for sure, but on a much deeper, troubling human level. <laughs> this is the final issue of The Vision. That's the last one? What? Yeah, 12 issues, because Tom King got snatched up by DC for Rebirth. He's now exclusive to them, he's writing their uh, main Batman. Batman title, and he's probably got another project in the works on top of his Vertigo series, The Sheriff of Baghdad, which is going to have a Babylon. second season. Oh yeah, they had to change the name, didn't they? They did. Eh, whatever. Um, but anyways, Tom King, ex-CIA agent, has been writing the adventures, well, not so much adventures as the suburban, uh, nightmare <laughs> of the Vision family. Because, you know, the dysfunctional robot who already has, like, five different malfunctioning robot siblings decided to build his own family, including a wife, a son, a daughter, and a dog somewhere down the line. And it all went terribly. Just how terribly, and where does that leave everyone? Find out in this issue. Ooh. Ooh. 
What a tease. Um, sticking with Marvel, let's talk to Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supreme. This is a new spinoff book. If you've been loving um, the new Jason Aaron uh, solo series, you're going to probably enjoy this as well, you know, because in that first arc it was all about the death of magic and there's very little magic. And so Doctor Strange is teaming up with other Sorcerer Supreme, Supreme including the Ancient One. Uh, there's going to be Wiccan, there's going to be Merlin and a few others, and there's lots of crazy, weird, bizarre looking monsters that seem like they would be out of a Guillermo del Toro movie. And um, yeah, this kind of gets you even more, because you know, I've heard there's a movie coming out about this guy, so what's one more book for your budget? Why not? Right. But isn't the ancient one dead like five times over? And also a woman now? What? That's another cliffhanger. And it's, uh, and it's also Robbie Thompson and Javier Rodriguez are the team on this. Uh, and from Image Comics, the second issue of Rick Remender's new blockbuster hit, Seven to Eternity, continues, uh, featuring jaw-dropping art from Jerome Pena. Um, yeah, dude, Jerome Pena, I... Yeah. 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 Um, Pretty we're, much. we're just going to go, yeah, on that. <laughs> uh, Rick Remender, you're a lucky man to have people like this drawing your comics. Um, great cover by Eric Kenyette here. Um, two covers for this issue. And we also have the second print of number one, because we sold out of it in like a day. And I know you didn't <laughs> get to see it. Um, so we got a bunch of these in number two. Uh, this is, it might not be scary, but it's got like, more aliens and bizarre, mm -hmm. strange sci fi ness you shake stick at. Um, it's Romo Pena. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I've got another actually really amazingly beautifully drawn uh, sci-fi series here from Vertigo. The second issue of Frostbite by the team of Joshua Williamson and uh, Jason Sean Alexander, who's been doing his own series over an image called Empty Zone, which I absolutely love. He nails like the, the real gritty like cyberpunk aesthetic, the really dirty side of the cyberpunk mm -hmm. stuff that really emphasizes the punk in the genre, rather yeah. than just the, we're gonna throw some glowy lines on everything aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they have teamed up to tell the story of a world that is freezing over, not just in like the, oh, well, you know, everything's covered in snow when you have to wear parkas, but like, people are starting to turn to ice, like just straight up, like, they get this disease that freezes you, and then punks come along and like, break you with baseball bats, cause you know, this is a degenerate future world, and these teens, they just see people who are frozen, and they're like, hey, that looks like good entertainment, let's smash some dudes. <laughs> right? Oh. I guess it beats peeing in the snow. Yeah, I mean, hey, whatever keeps you entertained, I guess. Can't imagine there's much TV in the dark no. cyberpunk future. No. Civil War II number six is here. It's uh, the what comes next after a huge cliffhanger. Uh, as you can see from the cover here, this was the deadliest vision that Ulysses, the young and human, had yet about what could happen in the possible future. Um, and believe me, this is nothing compared to what actually you see inside the issue. And it just really... I've actually switched sides. I won't even tell you. <laughs> I was on one side, and then through the course of this, um, I've actually switched sides. But this is more of the battle between... Captain Marvel and Iron Man's forces and what exactly is going on with Ulysses and it kind of because uh, Marvel now has already launched relaunched with a lot of new issues like the Champions and if you want to kind of find out like why what's going on with some of those books you can find the answers right here or you can just continue to enjoy Civil War 2 the epic uh, that it is by Brian Michael Bendis and David Marquez and my next book off color stories for you to color bait Chuck Palahniuk's first uh, coloring book. Uh, yes, he's a writer. That, what a weird wait, sentence. Yeah, right? Let's wait a minute here. Um, Chuck Palahniuk is, of course, the celebrated author of Fight Club, Choke, Lullaby, a uh, ton of other novels, uh, quasi-Seattle local, at least Pacific Northwest local. Um, Close enough. Close enough. And he teams up with Duncan Figredo, um, Joel Jones, Steve Morris, Lee Bermejo, and a handful of other artists uh, who illustrate his NC-17 short stories in here. Um, which uh, So you're getting stories and some cool stuff to color. Um, and these also uh, come with a very cool limited uh, edition signed book plate that Chuck was nice enough to send. Uh, Chuck is, is an amazing uh, friend to the comic retailer, truly. Uh, since Fight Club 2 has come out, he's done all sorts of really cool promo items and really gone above and beyond to support us selling his stuff. So we really appreciate that. Uh, and we want to share that with you. You know, um, this is only 20 bucks because Dark Horse somehow, I don't know, they somehow print their books very cheap. 
cheaply. But really nice, <laughs> big hardcover. You're getting multiple stories in here as well as some stuff to color. Um, just because it's hardcover doesn't mean you can't scribble in it. That's okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, really, really cool. Uh, we have, you know, limited quantities of the book plates, so come in and get it sooner rather than later. All right, and I have one final book for you here. From Image, we have the, at this point, third collection, I believe, out of the Image Anthology called Island, curated by none other than Brandon Graham and Emma Rios. This is Simon Roy's Habitat. Yes. Really, 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 really cool sci-fi. Uh, this is the man that, with Brandon Graham, reinvigorated Prophet, of all things, to become one of Image's best-selling titles in the, uh, the whole Image revolution. Um, taking the story of a young cannibal boy as he uh, <laughs> navigates his strange cannibal society and tries to figure out, wait, why the heck are we eating people? Yeah, wait, what? Um, <laughs> and when are they going to come after me? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. When There's am I on the menu? Really, really great, like, weird technology. It's got this level of, like, it's totally out there in that, like, they're, like, okay, running around mech suits, like, there are these giant walker cityscapes, yeah. but then also everything is, like, designed in a way that makes it feel very, like, very, very, uh, real, I guess. Yeah, it's, there's something about that book, like, I think it's the best thing Simon's done, like, it's truly phenomenal, and I've got, like, a real, uh, Logan's Run kind of feel from Ooh, it, you actually, know? Actually, yeah. So it, it's, like, a foresty Logan's Run with cannibals. Yeah, Ooh. with a little bit of uh, the Bioshock aesthetic thrown in there, just for good measure. Yeah, very great. There's no way I could top that, but if you're a brown coat fan, you don't care because Serenity is back. The crew of the Firefly is back in a brand new adventure uh, from Dark Horse, keeping it re keeping it keeping it real, um, <laughs> keeping it in Post space. Fake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no Power in the Verse is a brand new limited series. Chris Robertson, who you know from Aliens books over at Dark Horse, he's taking over this. Uh, Joss Whedon is still executive producer, but is uh, continuing adventures of Mal as they aim to misbehave in a brand new adventure to save one of their own and one of their is in jeopardy. Well, very, that was very succinct, sir. Succinct, because I have one more bonus to tell That's you right. about. Whoa! Uh, and my final book is a true, okay, well, maybe not final book, but this is true treasure. Prince of Cats, Ron Wimberly. Yeah. Straight up one of the greatest comics I've ever read. Ever. Like, you know what, this is one of the great, like, it doesn't matter if this is comics. This man took Shakespeare and distilled it and synthesized it in like the weird underground 80s hip-hop fashion ninja aesthetic vibe and not only is it just dripping with style and confidence and energy but he actually made Shakespeare understandable like I couldn't get that crap for anything in school and this man has somehow made a slang version of Shakespeare that's still an iambic pentameter and that makes more sense somehow to me I, I just it, yeah the, the soundtrack comes alive as you read this. Um, it's your basic uh, kind of uh, Romeo and Juliet take initially, but uh, dear God, this is just brilliant. And this is the super definitive version. We really redid some of the letters in here. It is much larger, as you can see. There's a ton of special uh, black and white um, sketches in the back. And it from just page one, this is just absolutely one of the greatest things. I, I'm so happy this is here, and I can sell this to people. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty much the best. It disappeared within like a month of the first printing. Yeah. And this, I mean, it's it's something that everyone should own. Like, no joke. Just no joke. You should own it. Yeah. Uh, hey, one more bonus pick because, uh, as you may have seen on the webs there, especially there's this really cool website called comicsplend.com. Uh, some Seattle guy puts that together. Anyway, there's the final trailer, the first trailer for Hugh Jackman's final movie is Wolverine. It's called Logan. It's got a young girl in it, and there's been lots of clues that she's going to be X-23. There's the clone daughter of, clone daughter of Wolverine. I almost said the clown daughter of Wolverine. <laughs> no, right here. no. So if you want her no story, clowns. get it here. We've got the volume. This is volume one. This is a complete collection volume of all her stories. It'll tell you about what happens with the Weapon X program. So it kind of gets you primed for next year's big final Wolverine movie. So come in and check it out. And uh, thanks for checking us out this week. Happy, oh, oh, have a oh. safe and happy Halloween. Uh, 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 what? Oh. Uh. And I know you can't see it, but we're just going to imagine that there is a very nice Mobius hardcover right here. Unfortunately, My Diamond God. hates us, okay, but, you know, we're going to deal with that. We're going to flow with it like Mobius, uh, and the very, very first 
American release of Mobius stuff that hasn't been seen in 20 years in America Ooh. is finally out. The Gardens of Adenia or the World of Adenia. Um, this is a great introduction to Mobius. Um, if you don't know who Mobius is, I'm sorry. We're, you know, I'm not going to help you here. Um, but 50 bucks, hardcover, dark horse. It's gorgeous. I hope it's gorgeous. I'm very excited. The first of many, um, but truly, truly phenomenal. Up there with that Prince of Cats stuff. Uh, so make sure that you uh, keep it tuned to our social medias here, and we'll uh, alert you when we actually get it in. Um, but as Will was saying, thank you all for watching us, and uh, have a great Halloween. Um, you know, whatever. Don't be safe. You're not going to. Right, have fun. <laughs>